Hey YouTube, Calc Programmer one here, and today I'm going to be doing a video reply to um, basically address some of the issues that came up in MKBHD's Note 3 Revisit video from yesterday. Um, so what he went over in that video was he had a Note 3 and he went back to revisit it and how it's held up since release and how it can be turned more into an AOSP-like device. Um, but his way of doing that was just updating all the apps, installing the Google equivalent apps, um, but still using the TouchWiz ROM as a base. And he mentioned that that was pretty much the only way to do so at the moment. Well, that's not really true because, in fact, there's been a Cyanogen mod build out that's basically been out all month um, it just entered the nightly phase now, so it's very early, but it actually works pretty well if you can uh, stand losing a few minor details. Um, so I have it installed on my Note 3 right now, and I'm going to give you a little tour of it and how it works on this phone. So as you can see, I have my Note 3, and this is the T-Mobile variant. And the reason this is important because the AT&T variant and the Verizon variant have a locked bootloader. And with a locked bootloader you will not be able to flash a custom ROM. Um, the variants that do support it are the T-Mobile, the Sprint, the Verizon Developer Edition, the International Edition, uh, LTE, and I think the Canadian Edition as well all support an unlocked bootloader. And with that, you can install a custom recovery like Twerp, and from there, install CyanogenMod. So, how does CyanogenMod work? Well, it actually works pretty well. Uh, it's basically what you would expect of a AOSP ROM, um, but, in, but it's running on this incredibly good hardware. So let's turn it on. As you can see, the AOSP lock screen works fine. Um, it's not TouchWiz at all. So we'll go ahead and unlock this. So the first concern that everyone seems to have when I mention, oh, this phone can run CyanogenMod is, will I lose my S Pen features? Because, uh, I mean, that's the big selling point of this phone is S Pen features. Will you lose them? Well, it depends on what you consider a feature. You will lose all of the TouchWiz framework S Pen stuff, the scrapbook, the memo taking, the handwriting recognition, all of that is gone uh, as you would expect because that's all software features but all the hardware features are still there um, so if all you use the S Pen for like me is a mouse and a occasional handwriting device it works fine for that. Uh, the app I use is called Memo it's a free open source app on the Play Store I've been using it since my Note 1 days, and it works perfectly in CyanogenMod. Uh, let's go ahead and open it. Open a memo. So as you can see, it kind of is a clone of the original S Note. Uh, you can, but yeah, it's got pressure sensitivity. And then the side button actually functions as an eraser so if you hold the side button down you can erase so if all you need is basic handwriting uh, and drawing this app is perfectly fine for that so have no fear about the S Pen it also works as your normal um, navigation device so you will not lose your basic S Pen features but things like the holding down and tapping for a screenshot does not work and the S Pen detection switch doesn't have anything to handle that so it doesn't do anything when, it, when you plug in and unplug the pen so that works um, next up on the list everyone wants to know about the camera and the uh, TouchWiz camera seems to be getting mixed reviews personally. I'm not a fan of it. Um, yeah, it has some cool features that I like, but at the same time, 
the interface is awful, I think. Uh, and as you can see, I'm running a custom DPI. If you've noticed, everything on my screen is a bit smaller than um, what it is on the default. And what that means is that I've changed my DPI. And the DPI setting is um, determines how big everything is, text, icons, everything. Uh, default is 480. I've turned mine down to 320 to give you a little bit more room on the screen. And now when I did that on the TouchWiz ROM, it really screwed up all the default apps because they're hard-coded at 480. So they looked really bad. And you can use an exposed framework module to basically undo that change for those apps, which I did. Um, but I'd prefer an app that just kind of handles multi-DPI well. And the AOSP camera actually does that perfectly. So, in that regards, I'm a fan of the AOSP camera, and I don't mind the interface. The only thing that it's lacking right now is some of the um, more interesting video modes that the Snapdragon 800 supports, like the um, 4K and the slow motion video. The As you can see, we're in video camera mode right now, and... Yeah, the video, it works fine. You can see on the screen it's previewing. Um, we have our video sizes up to 1080p, but we don't have a 4K or high resolution mode, or high frame rate mode, rather. So, in that respect, it is lacking those features, but hopefully they'll get added at some point. And then, of course, we've got our normal picture camera, uh, which basically works every bit as well as the TouchWiz camera, I think. Uh, the focus works great. Um, I've actually gotten clearer pictures out of this camera than I ever got out of, of a TouchWiz camera um, when using no flash at all. So in lower light conditions, this is kind of the better camera, I think. So, camera seems to work pretty well. The other thing that uh, TouchWiz, or CM has, is the torch feature. Uh, on TouchWiz, the little assistance light widget only turned on the flashlight to a, a dim light. But with CyanogenMod, you can use a high brightness, which turns on at full brightness. So, if you use your phone as a flashlight, this will give you little bit brighter light which is pretty cool uh, so what doesn't work um, as, as I said this is a as a early nightly build so there are some things that don't work probably the main one is NFC NFC doesn't work at all it will not enable it doesn't do anything so if you need NFC, this is not the ROM for you. Personally, I don't really have a use for NFC, so I don't really care. And uh, Bluetooth. Bluetooth itself works great, but Bluetooth audio has some issues. Uh, mainly, whenever you're playing a song over a Bluetooth audio, it uh, plays back at a slower rate. So your song will actually be slower and, like, distorted. It's weird. Um, probably like a, a sample rate issue, but that hasn't been fixed yet. So if you use Bluetooth audio a lot, um, probably a good idea to pass on this. I've switched over to using a, an aux cable in my car because Bluetooth doesn't work. Uh, but other than that, everything that I can think of works great on CyanogenMod. It's never lagged for me. It's always been super fast. Everything is really fluid, instantaneous. This also <clears throat> is with art enabled. So with art enabled, everything is working really smoothly. Uh, it's probably the smoothest experience I've ever seen on a phone. Um, and of course, it's 4.4.2 KitKat. We can do the Android 4.4.2 thing. 
So yeah, this is the real deal. And other than that, yeah, those are the that uh, about page so any of the information you want to know there it is so yeah that's about it for my quick little look at signage mod 11 for the note 3 if you want uh, the memo app or if you want to see mkbhd's re-review video of the note 3 they'll be in the description below and yeah thanks for watching